four, and we have a quite a few things to chat about tonight. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go through the list here. Tonight, we're going to talk about another major milestone for Fisker. We're going to talk about Fisker Ocean lock dates. We're then going to talk about Fisker Ocean Extreme Heat Testing, the Paris Motor Show, and lastly, the new configurator. And not only uh, are we going to get a new configurator this month, I actually got a new screen. I was telling Jim and Matt, who are our guest hosts tonight on All Things Fisker Live. So got a, a new monitor, so I have a, a lot of space over here and over here, so I'll be able to look directly at you tonight. And then also I'll be looking over there and over there at different mm -hmm. screens that I have on on my screen. So uh, I got the chat up over here and I get to watch the chat the whole time now, guys. I can actually see um, everything that's going on while I'm talking. I don't have to flip through uh, different browsers. So that's actually nice. So um, let's start off since I can see over there. Let's see who uh, we got 22 people watching. We'll probably get quite a few more here in the next five minutes. Um, but where's everybody? Uh, where's everybody watching us from tonight? Rosman is already here. Oh, that's nice. Um, we also have, uh, let's see here, we have uh, Silver Nort. I've seen him before. We have yeah. uh, OJ Grace and uh, Lydia, Paul. Uh, Paul's from, uh, he's uh, watching us from Deerfield, I'm guessing Beach, Florida. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty far away. Hopefully that didn't get affected oh, I know by the hurricane. Is. Do you? Where, is that, did that get affected by the hurricane? I used to live near there. Oh, wow. Yeah, how is it? Is it a nice place? Yeah, I used to live there, and I used to live in Boca Raton. Got it. Very nice. Um, we got uh, someone close to me, kind of, sort of, Rancho Cucamonga. Um, Orange County, even closer. Mac, welcome. Uh, so we got people from all of our Rock Springs, Wisconsin. Escondido, even closer to me. Lydia, Escondido, California. That's that's not too far. So, yeah, tonight we got a kind of a, I don't know if I'd say action-packed show, but we got some stuff that we're going to talk about and some exciting things, I would say. Um, exciting for Fisker, exciting for us as people watching uh, Fisker get the Fisker Ocean to production here on November 17th, 2022. And um, it would be good to know, actually, days to November 17th, we're at 43 days from the official start of production. So that's not too far away. Cool. Yeah, not too far away. What is that? Almost six weeks now. Um, six weeks and Fisker will officially start production. So I'm super excited about that, and we have a lot of stuff coming out this week. Um, a few more people. Hello from uh, Kids Soccer Practice in LA. LA. Hello, Tommaso. Thanks for joining us. Love having you in the chat. He's also a member of uh, the Fiskerati uh, Club. So if you aren't a member, you can actually hit the Join button if you're watching this on the Fiskerati channel. There's a Join button down there, and I believe, uh, I believe uh, Jim has a... Uh, membership as well on his so there'll probably be a join button on his and there's a subscribe button on all of our channels so hit the subscribe button and uh, while you're here let's uh, get everybody to hit the like button that's always a fun thing if everybody hits the like button we got 57 people now we'll probably get a few more coming in so let's talk about the Paul, major uh, yeah what do you got hey Sean Paul wants to know if you have any Fiskarati hats you know, I don't, Paul. Um, we do have some Fiskarati uh, shirts. Now, what I used to have a clothing company way back in, in like 1999, and I actually did skateboards and things like that. And I actually custom embroidered all the, the hats, um, screen printed all the shirts myself, thousands and thousands of them. And uh, I, I, you know, that's what I said. I said, hey, we have shirts. You can see me wearing one right here. It's it's a it's a good quality shirt, but it's nowhere near like actually pulling the squeegee on the ink. I don't know if you guys have ever done screen printing. Um, it's super fun and uh, it's messy, but uh, the, the quality of those shirts that I made in the in the past um, for a skateboard company much nicer than than these right here. I'll be honest, but hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? You gotta start somewhere. You're wearing a cool shirt, Jim. Uh, you got your OSR Garage shirt. And I can't quite read your shirt, uh, Matt. What, what does yours say? Oh, it's my son's university, so. Uh, hey, that's a good one. Uh, I'm wearing his school today. That's a good one, but I see your hat. I see your hat there. You got a, an Ocean Views yeah. hat. And you've got a really cool um, sticker for Tesla tips right on your desk there. That's pretty neat. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's my uh, big, big sticker for my, uh, when I do reviews and 
over the uh, table shots and stuff like that. Very nice. For unboxings. Very nice. I like that. That's uh, maybe that'll be something that, that we get to do. Unbox the, the Fisker Ocean and we'll have to get a really big logo on the ground. Maybe in chalk or something like that. Um, so <laughs> another another major milestone for Fisker. That's what we're talking about. So the first major milestone that we had recently was Fisker building one production intent vehicle in a day. And that happened a few weeks back, that, that production tent vehicle. And that was actually pretty cool. Uh, you ended up seeing a photo of the entire uh, Magna team, some Fisker employees as well, gathered around that Fisker Ocean on the Magna floor, probably at the, I don't know where it was in the factory, but definitely in the factory where these are gonna be built, a CO2 neutral factory. And that was a really big milestone. We wrote about that one uh, and it, it was, uh, Quite a, a major milestone for the company, I would say, building their first, you know, uh, production intent vehicle. Then Fisker announced on Thursday. So this this week, what we do for those who are who are new to our channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe, by the way. But if you're if you're new to the channel, um, what we do each week on all things Fisker is we we talk about everything that happened um, in the past week. So we do this every Wednesday. So if something came out on Thursday, chances are we'll either, you know, include it in our, our weekend recap, what we call, um, what do we call that? We call that, uh, uh I don't even remember what that, that's called this week in Fisker. There we go. There's so many things with Fisker, this and that, um, this week in Fisker, that's like the weekend edition. Um, so we always cover stuff in that. And then on Wednesdays, um, we, you know, three of us, we've been getting together and we've been doing all things Fisker. So uh, it kind of recaps everything that happened since last week when we were on the show. So on Thursday of last week, uh, you all probably read the article on Fiskerati. Maybe you read the press release, who knows, uh, or maybe some other site. And uh, Fisker ended up announcing that they've built 95 Fisker Oceans to date. And uh, I want to say it was um, it was starting sometime in like August 3rd, that, that uh, last uh, quarterly earnings report. I believe it was August 3rd. That's when Fisker announced that they had built 55 Fisker Oceans. So the company ended up building an additional 40 vehicles on that high volume production line over at Magnastera. And uh, they also built some of them on the line right before they got to the high production uh, or the high volume assembly line. But they ended up building 40 more in, I don't know, what is that, about two, two months time. So that was actually quite an accomplishment. That was Thursday of last week. So we have 95 Fisker Oceans built to date. And those vehicles, Fisker tells us, are going to be used for marketing purposes. So if you were to go to uh, at some point in the future, we don't know exactly which one. But uh, if you go to a pop-up location, you might see one of those production intent vehicles there. Um, so that was quite a big milestone. Did you guys uh, get a chance to read that? What were your thoughts and what were, your, what were you thinking about when you read that? Was that like a big milestone to you, as big as it was uh, seeing that first one roll off the production line? Yeah, I mean, I, I was surprised that they produced that many. That's pretty awesome. And um, that definitely means that there's a better chance that we're actually going to get maybe sit in one before we actually get ours. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, when they had one that they made in an entire day, and then now they're going to be increasing the number that they're going on the line. Uh, and it's pretty impressive. You know, uh, gives me high hopes that we're going to see the production increase uh, to um, what they're looking at getting, um, I guess, early next year when they start uh, getting significant numbers made. Yeah. Yeah. I thought almost 100 vehicles. That was pretty cool. So you were referring to Jim the, or Matt, the, uh, the 23 vehicles that Henrik tweeted about or, or tweeted, posted about on social media. Um, he included this video in, in that one. So. Um, this is the Fisker Ocean, and that's going to kind of go in a loop there, so that'll be kind of fun. But um, that is the Fisker Ocean on the high volume assembly line. It looks like it's getting kind of close to the end because I don't know where it goes after that. But um, the, the neat thing about that particular video was that uh, Fisker ended up uh, saying, Henrik Fisker actually ended up saying that he was... Uh, going to start production, the company is going to start uh, 
production on 23 vehicles next week. So um, we've been seeing, you know, ones roll off. We don't know how many they've done on a weekly basis, but they're going to have a plan or they're planning next week. So that'll be uh, the second week of October. They're going to try to crank out 23 in one week. So that'll be you know, quite incredible. That's, you know, three a day if, if they, you know, run the factory all uh, all seven days. My guess is they probably only run it five days, but maybe they do seven. If they do it five, then it would be, you know, um, you know, a few less, but or actually a few more a day. Um, we'd be at uh, four and, and change. I don't know how, how they do that, but um, we, we certainly would have more rolling off the line. And I thought that was actually kind of neat. So we wrote an article about that one yesterday or the day before, actually. And that would be the 23 of the total 95 that they have. That would actually end up being roughly 25% of the entire total in one week. So it took them a year uh, to get, you know, I don't know how long exactly. Maybe it was like um, nine months or so uh, to get 55 Fisker Oceans bill. It took them two months to get 40 bill. And then it's going to take them next week, if they're successful, uh, an entire week uh, for 23. So 25% of the entire total built in a week. Like that's, that's quite, you know, on our, on our way to, to scaling, um, Fisker Ocean. So that was, that'll be kind of exciting. Another thing I want to add is that yeah. they've been doing a variety of different specs to uh, trim levels. So it's not like they just yeah. did one car. They did all different paint colors. They're doing all different. Uh, we've seen sport, We've seen, mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing there's going to be extreme. I, I don't know. Have we seen an ultra sticker? On I haven't seen ultra. I, I haven't seen yeah. one yet. Um, but it's definitely seems... seen, seen the one in the, in the sport and the extreme, but yeah, no, no ultras yet. But it is interesting that they're doing a variety. I think they're testing all the different, um, trim yeah. levels, what's included. So I, I, I think that's great. It's, uh, it's a lot harder to do that, too, because each car is different if they're doing different cars and on the same line versus saying just doing them all ultras or all sports. Yeah, and that was that, that was funny, too, on that on that particular video right there. Um, I, I'm not going to play the audio for it, but I, we posted, a you know, the same loop. Uh, on our, on our uh, YouTube page or whatever YouTube account, and you can actually hear uh, the thud of, of the, the door. door closing. Yeah, it actually kind of saw. It's funny. Um, I, I was trying to think of what should I write about yesterday, and there really wasn't much news. And I was going through Henrik Fisker's um, through his Instagram, and I saw that he actually commented about uh, somebody asking about the lift gate there, the the rear tailgate, and whether or not it was powered. And it is, he says it was, and, or it is. And the prototype we know had the little button at the top. And if you look close right there on that lift gate uh, or, or tailgate, whatever you want to call it, there is the little button up there uh, to press it and then it'll automatically close or electronically close. So I, I wrote about that yesterday. I, I, I titled the, the article, you know, Fisker Ocean, Solid as a Rock. And the funny thing, like the, the you know, the, the articles that are just, random and I have nothing to write about. So I just pick a topic and, and write about it for fun. That article has been viewed 5,000 times today. Um, so it's, it's crazy. Um, and, and sometimes like the milestone one, the, the major milestone, the 95 vehicles, like that was viewed 3,500 times uh, on the first day. So it's like the, sometimes the ones that I would much prefer people to, to look at, they don't necessarily click on those ones, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, so that was, hey, I uh, did yeah, you notice that the did you notice that the rear seats are 40 20 40 finally got good view on that uh, versus yeah, that is a good view pre-production were the 40 yeah. 60 I think you're right yeah I didn't so, comment on that in the article but yeah right there is a beautiful view with, with, with that sea salt interior it definitely uh, in the black felt or whatever that material is on the on the rear um, you can definitely see the divide there. Yep. What do you think that yellow tag is in the in the in the rear? Is that like one of those cigarette lighter, uh, you know, auxiliary it's, plug or something? Can't quite we, tell. That. On our um, say on our ID four, we have a little spot in the back that you can pull open and you reach inside, and there's a pull tab, and that is the emergency release for the charger. It's oh. possible that that may be what that is. Got it. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't, I, I just saw that one, but it's like each time you see one of these, you just keep seeing things you didn't see before, um, at least myself. So yeah. Is that a okay. solar roof or can you tell? I couldn't tell. Um, it is not. It's hard, to, it's hard to see. It's hard to, it's hard to see, uh, especially with the tailgate up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite impressive. I like those wheels. Uh, those are the wheels that I'm getting, those, those air gliders. Uh, and we'll, we'll end up having black. to see you get them black ones. Yeah, I'm too afraid of, of uh, even though Fisker's going to have a park my car and all that stuff, I'm still afraid of scratching the wheels. Um, it's much easier to ignore a scratch on, on silver. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's if, you know, I doubt if you scratch a wheel and they have that, hey, you're not going to scratch your wheel. I, I don't think they're coming out with a gift. Fisker's not coming out with like a guarantee. Like, if you scratch your wheel, we'll give you a new wheel. Um, but like, that would be cool. That would be, like the first. <laughs> that would be a really cool <laughs> feature. Um, hey, if, if you scratch your wheels, we'll give you new ones. Um, that would be pretty cool technology with all those digital cameras everywhere. That will uh, be part of a warranty. Yeah, that would be a cool warranty if it did that, but I'm, I'm guessing it probably wouldn't include, you know, uh, your wheels not getting getting scratched. Um, one well, funny thing, actually. Well, you can get that. You can actually get that from the dealerships. Um, really? We've we've done that. And uh, wow. it basically, because a lot of those, the manufacturer wheels are not like your, um, you know, um, aftermarket wheels where you might be able to buy a set for 1200 bucks or something like that. A lot of these manufacturer wheels are hard to get. And sometimes yeah. they're as up to a thousand dollars piece. So we have done that before. We've actually bought a warranty on the wheels and it doesn't matter what you do to them. They can have curb rash, they can have scratches, they can have whatever, and they get replaced. They either fix them, if they can't fix them, then they replace them. Oh, wow. Well, you know what I'm going to do just for fun here? I'm going to do a I'm going to do a poll here for for everybody. I'm going to say, "Hey, what type of wheels are you getting? 22 20 inch Aero Stealth, 22 inch Slipstream, 22 inch Slipstream in black like you said, Jim, or we're going to end up having uh oh geez, they don't even give you that option. Okay, I can only write three choices. That's kind of crap crummy. Um tw or four four choices. 22 inch Air Gliders. Uh, we won't be able to know then what uh what people like, but um, there you go. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what, uh, wheels are the most popular. There's a, a poll in the chat for those that are interested in, in taking it. Um, so one, one thing that's interesting, since we're, we're here talking about the vehicle, we see the vehicle right there. We're talking about wheels and stuff, um, paint protection film and, and things like that. I saw a couple people mentioning like, oh, that silver, uh, lining looks really, really beautiful. Um, I, I ended up opting, I'm, I've, I've made my selection uh for the big sur blue and i actually uh there was a, a chat today or a, a, a post a topic in in the forum and somebody was asking about paint protection film and you shared that that video with them uh matt so th thanks for sharing that and in there um i i actually said hey i'm, I'm probably going to use that ceramic coating or whatever and um i found uh the same company where i found like hey it's super hard to take care of the matte finish uh, like Big Sur Blue, or maybe even Stealth Green for those that, that can wait till 2023. And the uh, I'm going to end up probably using that that Dr. Beasley's. I reached out to them, see if they could, you know, give us a sampler or something like that to maybe try, to, try it out. Um, who knows if I'll hear, hear back from them. But that looked like a really good product. They had like a pro product and it had like a, you know, a couple different spray bottles you can spray on. Uh, and it was 500 bucks. I thought, wow, that's a lot for, you know, a, a ceramic coating, but probably much cheaper if you apply it correctly than having like bird droppings on the paint on that matte finish or, um, you know, different, you know, grime that could damage the paint. So I ended up, uh, let's see here. What do we got? We got Jim's favorite 2023 wheels or, or uh, those mats. are those new ones that we saw. Yeah. Those are, those are nice looking. Um, look at that. We got five windows open. That's actually kind of fun on the screen. Uh, wow. we got your, yeah, it's a first. That's a first. Um, Sean's uh, getting restring figured out. Not really. Uh, <laughs> so, so we got 98 people watching too. Welcome. If you are uh, just joining us, um, we're talking about all things Fisker tonight. We're, we're actually in the middle of talking about Fisker's major milestone hitting 95 
Fisker Oceans uh, to date. They announced that on Thursday of last week. And they also announced uh, earlier this week that they're going to build 23 Fisker Oceans next week. They're planning for it right now. Maybe that requires a shutdown of the factory to do some tweaks and some, you know, in- improvements maybe. Who knows? We haven't seen too many photos or videos coming out of the factory this week. Not to say that we won't, but we're talking about paint finishes right now. And um, there ha- happens to be that 2023 wheel right there. We don't know the name of it, but you see the yeah. Big Sur blue paint right there. And I was just talking about I think they should call finishes. it Blade Runner. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool looking, cool looking wheel. Um, so I, I, I reached out to the, the, a, a couple local companies here where I live here in San Diego and asked them about professionally applying the... Uh, the the ceramic coating to the Fisker Ocean in in matte uh, the matte finish the Big Sur blue and I got a quote of seven hundred bucks it include it included the ceramic coating but it it was not the same quality from the sound of it is is the one um, that I posted at the forum uh, earlier today the ceramic coating that I posted earlier today um, it said that if you end up getting nicks on your car it'll somehow seal it up. I thought, wow, that sounds pretty impressive. Um, that does sound pretty, pretty professional. <laughs> so, so I, I'm thinking maybe uh, doing it myself. It might be a DIY, uh, do it yourself, and that will be a fun, a fun one to do. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're looking at. The other option that I think you're doing, uh, Matt, is is you're going to do the paint protection film, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I plan on getting the, the full front, which is like the hood, the bumper, fenders, uh, headlights, uh, mirror caps. And it, it's just the areas that get hit hardest when you're on the highway, you know, with bugs and rocks mm-hmm. and sand and, and stuff like that. And the two cars that I've done it on um, look great. My car uh, is four and a half years old, the oldest one, and it the paint still looks great. So. Wow. That's really good. And do you do you ever get rocks that hit it or anything that that's hit it really hard? And what what does yeah. it do? Yeah, you can. Um, some some of the rocks don't leave any uh, marks, but other ones uh, that do, you can usually use like a um, like a, a, a hair blower dryer on heat, and it usually um, self heals. Oh wow! The finish. So yeah, it's pretty impressive. Very cool. Yeah, I, met, I saw one one comment in in the forum about somebody being hesitant to actually put it on their car because it could yellow. Have you ever seen it, it yellow on that, any other car or any other car? That was a that was a problem like twenty years ago on the first okay. versions, but <laughs> yeah. the ones now are 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 like UV resistant. Uh, right. I haven't heard any issues with yellowing. So that would be like tint turning purple. Like that used to happen a long time ago, and now it's probably good enough quality. It's a high quality one. Yeah, you're not going to have an yeah. issue. Uh, there, there's yeah. several brands uh, like 3M, Xpel, uh, SunTech are the major ones. If you stick with the major brands, you're not going to have a problem. Yeah. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. So that's going to be kind of fun to, to do that. You know, watch your video on getting your uh, Fisker Ocean uh, paint protection film applied like you did your Volvo. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Pretty neat. Can't wait to see that one because I probably won't be getting the paint protection film. I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna just do the the ceramic coating. The the little bit, much less, I should say, much less uh, cost. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. That'll be kind of a fun, a fun one. So cool. So uh, that was the, the milestone. So that's what we talked about. So Fisker ended up hitting that milestone. Next week, we'll end up hopefully getting an update on that, probably at the end of the week, or it'll come the week after. And we'll end up seeing what uh, Fisker does there. Can they hit their 23 uh, Fisker Oceans produced on that high volume assembly line? TBD, we'll find out probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, you'll probably uh, see an article about that one. <laughs> um, so then let's talk about this one. This was kind of interesting. This one came out on the weekend it was actually sunday we ended up getting uh an update to our account so if you have a fisker ocean one on order you may have seen your lock date or your build expiration date change and it may have changed for you if you were probably in early october november ish time frame I think maybe even we saw one in early December possibly change. 
Um, I can't quite remember, but definitely uh, October, November, um, we saw a lot of people's change. You, you know, you, you may have had yours change. Let us know in the comments if you did. Um, that would be kind of interesting. And we'll see whose was maybe, uh, say in the comments, um, when your original lock date was, if you know what it was, and then what it changed to. And we'll see like who was the latest um, lock date that, that may have changed. That'd be kind of a fun one. And let's see our slipstream poll real quick. Yeah, let's see how that, or our, our wheel poll, let's see how that thing worked. It looks like slipstream is one, that's why I just said slipstreams. Um, Let's see here, we had 50 people vote. We've got about 102 people watching right now. So just about 50%. Um, which wheels are you getting? Slipstreams ended up winning kind of by a long shot. Uh, 22 inch slipstreams, 41% of the people watching tonight are gonna go with the slipstream. 22% uh, air glider and 34% uh, air glider and 23% aero stealth. Um, so that's, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I'll probably go with the Aero Stealth wheels on the uh, Fisker Ocean Sport that we have confirmed. I'm going to go with the, the Great White on that one and the Aero Stealth. I'll probably take the, the HUD caps off them and, and just sport the actual wheel itself uh, because I think that looks a little nicer. And they're actually going to be about an inch bigger than what I have on the Tesla Model 3. So that'll be kind of exciting. So lock dates, um, that's what we're talking about right now, lock dates. Let's, let's uh, share this bad boy right here. Um, this is the uh, screen, let's see here, can I zoom out here? Uh, let's see, no, can't shrink that one. So we're gonna end up uh, doing this here. We're gonna go that, maybe that's not very good. Um, let's do this, there we go. That's how it originally was. <laughs> so this is uh, my account right now. I've logged in to my Fisker account. And as you can see, um, you uh, can actually see my Fisker Ocean 1 right there. That's my Fisker Ocean 1 that I have. I currently have selected uh, the Keller Big Sur Blue Wheels at 22 inch F5 air glider. So I'm, uh, I don't have the most popular of the people who are watching tonight. Um, I've got the middle of the road and it'll be interesting if, if uh, YouTube would let us actually do more poll choices, we would have been able to see which ones are more popular, the slipstreams in, you know, silver or black, the air gliders in silver and black. I'm going with the regular, you know, air gliders. I think the Big Sur Blue with the silver wheels, I think that looks nice. Uh, and I definitely don't want to scratch uh, black wheels, but I am going with Black Abyss. I think that'll be a nice interior. That's the, the pine, uh, which I'll also uses recycled materials, so that'll be nice. Um, went with the carpet floor mat set, the roadside safety kit, which is probably a waste of money, and the extra key fob. Um, so that's uh, my selection. Grand total price, whew, $69,619. That's a whopper. Um, but what we're looking at here is we're looking at this right here. Oh, I'm zooming in. Let's see. Oop, can I zoom in here? Oop. There we go. Whoa. Look at that. There we go. So that's what we're looking at. So my build date used to be 1010. Uh, so October 10th, 2022 at 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's now changed as you can see right here. We now have uh, November 21st, 2022 at 12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we have our typo right there. I, I recorded that typo. Um, <laughs> it should, I believe, say expires, but ex expiries, um, expiries, I think that's a real word, right? It means like to have something expire, but I thought it's probably supposed to read expires. Read expires. Nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, November 21st, that's my date. It's a Monday. And that'll be the week before Thanksgiving for the people who are watching us here in, uh, I think it's the same week actually, quite possibly as Thanksgiving um, this year. So that'll be uh, that'll be an exciting week for, for me. And I should mention that that's not a guarantee that date, as you can see down here below, it says build lock dates are estimated and subject to change. Final build lock dates will be confirmed via email two weeks prior to locking. So it's entirely possible that my Fisker Ocean lock date gets pushed out to another date. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't, but uh, it's it's entirely possible that it that it does. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of neat. What what's your guys' change to, if anything? Did you guys have anything change on yours? Uh, my mine stayed the same. 
Um, okay. Yeah, I'm still March 13th. So still, I, I bet you're happy though to change to November because yeah. it, you may have missed the um, the configurator launch. Was that yeah. something you were worried about? That you That's not something it? I was worried about, but it was something that I wrote about the, the very yeah. first time we actually saw uh, the build dates on the website and the mobile app. So um, that was actually a lot of people in the forums were actually quite um, distraught, if you will, or some people were kind of bummed out that they wouldn't be able to play with the configurator before uh, changing their, uh, you know, being able to configure their car or look at high resolution images. Um, before they were locked in. And I was a little concerned, and that's why I thought mentally, okay, I'm going to make this selection well before I have to. And uh, I've had a couple changes. I had the great white and a couple accessory changes, but I've since stuck on Big Sur Blue. And I figured, uh, I was chatting to somebody in, in the Fiskarati forum, and I thought, uh, the guy's got a really good point. Hey, if you're going with the Fisker Ocean 1 and you're paying you know, $69,000, that'll be the most expensive vehicle I've ever purchased in my life. The Tesla being the, it'll become the second most expensive vehicle. Um, but that's a lot of money to me. And I thought, okay, I'm in agreement. I may as well go with the most premium uh, paint option because that's what you're paying for, right? You may as well get it. You're getting it for free, essentially. Uh, it's built, built into the cost. So um, I do have a second Fisker Ocean on order as a confirmed order. And that one will actually be uh, great white. So that's going to go with my original selection. Maybe I'll splurge if I really like those air gliders on the Fisker Ocean 1. Maybe I'll splurge and get those on the Sport that I have uh, confirmed. And yeah, go with the, I'm going to go with the free paint option. I'm guessing the standard option for the, the Fisker Ocean Sport Ultra and Extreme is probably going to be white and black. Um, for sure, white, possibly black, but we'll find out maybe with the configurator. And that's our next topic. Hey, the new configurator. Um, <laughs> so so uh, what have you guys heard about the, the configurator? Have you, have you heard anything about that? I haven't heard anything new. Yeah, I, I haven't either. I know we're expecting it this, this month. Uh, we're expecting to have that new Fisker Ocean configurator. Um, I would think it's going to actually be quite uh, quite fun to play with. And, and I don't know really what to expect other than high resolution images. When they said, Henrik said, you know, months ago, he said it was going to be a 3D configurator. When I thought 3D, I was thinking kind of like what Lucid has maybe. Lucid has a really good uh, builder configurator, if you want to call it that, where you can kind of go in and see different angles of the vehicle, kind of swivel it. Um, I haven't checked it out in a couple of months, maybe it's changed, but it had a really luxurious, um, you know, look of, of being able to see all the finishes on the vehicle. And that's, that's kind of, to me, the, the standard or, or what I'm hoping Fisker's building the configurator to, because that was a really cool experience. And uh, I, I can't wait to go in there and actually hopefully zoom in and see uh, the, the paint colors and the wheels and all the different details that you really can't see, not only in the existing configurator, but the configure the you know the photos that we get. You know, we're, we're getting more photos, um, and that was actually one of the reasons why Fisker ended up pushing out the uh, the lock dates. They actually said it was administrative change, so kind of going back in between you know the lock dates and, and the configurator a little bit. Kind of, they kind of play together in a way. Um, you know, people who get their date pushed out into the future get a chance to play with the configurator. Um, we actually spoke to a Fisker representative and they told us that it was purely an administrative change and also to give people more time. Like the dates that they originally selected were, it sounded like maybe arbitrary and um, they, you know, they didn't actually have a bearing on your actual uh, build date or, or build uh, that was actually going to happen in, at Magna Factory. So, um, you know, your, your build uh, will expire the lock. And then, you know, it could be a week, it could be two weeks, three weeks, a month, who knows how long, we don't know yet, uh, until the vehicle actually gets sent to the factory to be built. So the, the company thought, hey, let's give as many people a chance to, to check out those new photos, those new videos. Uh, I would expect more to, to be dropping, more to be released. And then you have the configurator coming out this month. Um, so we'll have plenty of time to, to possibly change our paint color, our wheels and our interior.
Um, I think the interior is the, is the biggest one that, that I'm most excited to, to look at um, because we, we've all more or less are, are pretty in tune with the interior that we've seen on the prototypes. We have loads of those photos, but we don't really have tons of great angles and uh, you know visuals of what the, the actual interior is going to be. We've, we've seen Fisker, Henrik Fisker sitting in the Fisker Ocean and um, some people are like, hey, there's a beige interior now. And I think, yeah, it's not really a beige interior. That's probably the, the lighting up above and it, it's making the sea salt look a little different. Who knows? Maybe there is a beige you know, or tan interior, but I think that's the sea salt. So that new configurator that we're hoping to get this month, and I still expect the company to release that, it would be um, the first time where hopefully we'll be able to see close-ups of the, the fabric and you know be able to you know virtually touch it if you will that'll be a cool um experience so i'm gonna actually post a poll and i'm gonna ask everybody what color interior option are you going with and it'll be interesting what, what option are you guys going with for your for your seats or your interior sea salt as of right now that's a nice one What about you, Matt? Sorry about that. I was working on something. <laughs> hey, no worries. Question. No worries. You fixed your audio, it sounds like. Yeah, I had an audio problem. <laughs> so what uh what interior are you going with? What interior option? Have you have you decided yet? With your Mariana? I, yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing the Mala Blue interior <laughs> at this point. Um okay. I'm, I'd like sea salt, but I just feel that it may be too light. You know, gotcha. but and the Malibu is different. I've never had a blue interior before, so it's kind of unique. <laughs> yeah, I've never had a blue interior either. Um, I've had a couple tan colors, um, and I've had two navy exterior colors. My very first car was a BMW 2002. And that was a navy blue. So this would be the, I think, I think I've had one other one, but I can't think, oh yeah, uh, definitely had one. My first car was navy blue. I think I've had one other one, but I can't think of what car it is off the top of my head. Um, so this Fisker Ocean will be like the second or third possibly uh, car that I've owned that actually has uh, a navy exterior. And I would much prefer like a tan interior, but we don't have that as an option. Um, so I'm going to go with the black uh, abyss uh, because it's uh, going to come in that polyurethane. And out here we go to the beach or, you know, where we go out, and, you know, out and about. And if we get dirty clothes, I think it'll clean easier being that polyurethane uh, material. Like the Tesla seats that we have, I believe that's like a polyurethane as well. They wipe really good and yeah. uh, clean really well. And I'm just not quite sure how Eco Suede is going to clean. Um, so that's my biggest concern, I would say. So like you, I would choose like, Jim, you're going with the sea salt, Matt, you're going with the, the, the blue, the Malibu. blue. I personally would choose if I was going with the eco, uh, suede option, I would go with the darker just in the event I had dirt or some crap on my clothes, not literally crap, but stuff on my clothes, um, that it wouldn't actually get dirty on, uh, the actual, uh, lighter, uh, material, like you mentioned, uh, Matt. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I would go with the darker if that was me, but I'm going with the black call your thing. And let's see here. We have, uh, 49% of the people currently who have answered the poll, uh, said wow. that they are going with Malibu like you, uh, Matt. So 37 votes. 48% Malibu, 37% Sea Salt, 13% Black Abyss. That's interesting. That's interesting. So the configurator, um, what are you guys expecting on the configurator? Are you, are you expecting anything from that or just? Oh, as far as date goes or? No, just uh, as far as like your expectations for it. What are you looking, or... what are you looking for? Like right now here, let's throw this on the screen. Here's the old school configurator. That's the old school one. What do you, do you have that in your mind mentally what this could potentially look like or, or do? I, I think they're this? gonna have, I think they're gonna have like a, a 360 interior where you can rotate the interior. A lot of cars have that. 
Yeah. Uh, Cause right now you can only see like one fixed view of the interior. Yeah. That's um, right. So I think that would be, you know, a nice addition if you can zoom around. Um, Cause I've seen that on some cars and that's pretty neat. You can like look at the back seats or look at the side, yeah. the side trim color. Um, I, I think if they could do something like that, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be now like I, I it's so hard to tell like in these images, like that's why you really need the high resolution ones. Like to me, looking at this black abyss here, that almost looks to me like it could be the eco fabric because that doesn't look polyurethane to me, but it just could be a, a grainy, a grainy image. Um, it almost looks identical to um, all of all of these. Eh, those have little lines in them. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if that's the polyurethane, but if it is, I'm happy with it. I think that looks like a beautiful interior. And I love that little aqua. I'm sure they have a name for it, but like that aqua. Um, oh, that stripe. Yeah, that stripe. And there's kind of like a little bit of that, you know, bluish color, uh, which it, I, I believe it looks like it might match what's on the brake calipers on the exterior. And then as well as the blue trim, if you have the uh, Fisker Ocean One or Extreme, you have that, uh, I don't know what pattern is that that squarish pattern on the roof uh, of all the different uh, solar cells. You end up having uh, it in that you know same color blue. So that will kind of be a blue that runs throughout the the vehicle, kind of like a, an accent color. I think it's nice. What about you, Jim? What are you what are you expecting? You expecting anything from from this configurator here? Um, yeah, nothing out of the abnormal. I think it's going to be probably in line with most of the other um, car manufacturers. I don't think that there's probably anything they're going to do that's special unless unless when you look at the interior, instead of having like a model like this where we're just looking at kind of a 360 rendering, um, that it's actually they've taken a 360 camera and set inside yeah. and actually got pictures of what it exactly looks like that in would whatever be really color. Cool. That would be pretty cool. That would be really cool. That would be pretty neat. I think that would be fun. There's the Big Sur Blue. Like, now that does not look like uh, the Big Sur Blue we see in the actual photos. It looks nice, but it doesn't, uh, the photos uh, look a lot nicer. Yeah, I love it's that. It's the same I with the Horizon blue. Gray. Yeah, it looks very similar. The Horizon Gray is really blue. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that blue, I love those blue brake calipers. And I think I've seen them on one of the vehicles coming off the line. So I think that's, uh, I think that looks like it might be uh, sticking with us. And it looks very similar to that, that pattern up there. Um, when I think I mentioned for those that kind of follow along, I think we talked about this the other week. I think I'm going to tint the interior of, of my roof, um, just so I can kind of block out that checkered pattern. Uh, so I don't end up with a, a checkered tan. I think that would be uh, real bad. No, I'm kidding about that. But I, I, I definitely think uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tint it just so that uh, when I'm driving in the sun here, I don't see constant movement of, of the checkers uh, on in the interior. I think that will really bother me. I won't, I, I won't do that right away. I'll, I'll play with it a little. But like on my iPhone, for example, the motion, I, there's like a sensitivity uh, button or I don't know what they call it, but there's uh, an accessibility options. You can actually on your iPhone, maybe even an Android device, you can actually say, hey, less movement on the screen. So like transitions and things like that in the app, you can actually stop those from happening um, because sometimes it drives my eyes crazy. And I thought, oh, seeing all these squares moving around the interior of the cabin mm -hmm. might drive my eyes crazy. So um, mm -hmm. if it is, uh, if it does, I'm going to end up definitely tinting the top there. But I did love the look of, I love the exterior look of, of that. That'll be a interesting one to see how that how that plays out um, with my Fisker Ocean uh, and whether or not I, I tint it. So new configurator, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun one to see. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I, I believe it'll definitely come out uh, by the end of the month, the question is, is what week? We, we're going to be coming up on week two. Uh, next week, we'll be lucky if we get it next week. I think it's going to be later, but we'll definitely let you know. It'll be uh, on our All Things Fisker. Um, I want to add one thing. I yeah. think there's a Paris show the third week of October. And You're I, right. Some people, are, some people are thinking they may tie it to that, which may not be a bad thing. Um, You're right. That's our next topic, Maybe actually. an unveiling. 
That's our so, next topic. It's actually the Paris Motor Show. There we go. There's the little there's a little text on the screen right there. Paris the Motor Show. Hey, the segue. You did it. You're good at the segue. <laughs> so let's check this out. This is um, the Paris Motor Show, and they've got a really cool um, they've got a really cool web page uh, at the Paris Motor Show. I really like it. I actually used the graphic uh, when I ended up writing that. Hey, Fisker is going to be at the Paris Auto Show. And there it is right there on the screen. The revolution is on. And it's going to be on October 17th through 23rd. And that's, uh, what is that? It's going to be like 12 days from now. So uh, that'll be interesting. That'll be a good one. It'll be interesting to see if one of those new Fisker Oceans uh, that we've been seeing roll off the assembly line will be at that show now austria is not too far away from france so I'll, I'll say that um i wouldn't guarantee though if, if you're going out to to you know paris um in the hopes to see a production intent vehicle i wouldn't i wouldn't go out there just for that um it's entirely oh, I possible my that flight we... oh no <laughs> oh, that's a bummer um you really aren't going out there are you no no <laughs> no okay um, yeah, however, we actually have, believe it or not, we had somebody, one of our, our, uh, our readers reached out to me and he's based in Chicago. I'm not going to share his name, uh, but he reached out to me and he's going to be in Paris on vacation during, uh, I believe this is going to actually be the 124th, um, Paris Motor Show. Uh, annual motor show. So it's been around for 123 years. This will be the 124th year, I believe. It might be 125th, but it's been around for over 100 years. And uh, we actually have somebody going uh, to represent Fiskarati, and I got them a press ticket to go there. And they're going to be taking photos and videos and sharing them with us. Uh, to, to write up an article and he's going to end up sharing, you know, a blurb and it'll be amazing if there is the production intent and um, somebody thanked us, uh, you know, Rick thanked us. I think I seen him in the chat here today. Um, he thanked us uh, for uh, having somebody go out there and, and Fisker themselves, they favorited the tweet. So um, that was kind of interesting. Um, they, they're like, yeah, cool. You guys have somebody going out to uh, Paris to, to check out the the car there so hopefully it's a new one but if it's not i'm not going to be uh totally bummed out because i i didn't spend you know 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks on a ticket to get out there uh so so no sweat off my back but um i'm excited just to have the the vehicle out there this will be the second time the fisker ocean has actually been at a uh, Paris uh, show if you will um the fisker ocean is actually going to be uh, at the Hall 4, stand 441 for the people that are, are interested. And that stand that it's going to be at, I'm going to butcher the name of it. It's called Agile Auto, maybe. Ag Agile or Agile Auto. Um, it's a, a partner of uh, Fisker's. It's called Credit uh, Agricole Consumer Finance. It's Fisker's fleet partner in France. And Fisker actually had the Fisker Ocean that that you know Fisker Ocean in sil you know silver lining paint color was at a previous event at Credit Art Agricole Consumer Finance's booth, and that was like two or two or three months ago. So this will be the second time uh, that Fisker has the Fisker Ocean at their booth, but it, this time it happens to be at the Auto Show. So that'll be uh, quite an interesting one. And Fisker actually announced, and I think I may have mentioned this last week, but. Fisker, when they announced that they were going to be at this particular auto show here, they mentioned that they're going to also build a Fisker lounge in Paris. And not only are they going to have a Fisker lounge, they're also going to have a Fisker Center Plus, which we're still trying to figure out what the heck is a Fisker Center Plus. Um, I, don't, I don't know what that is other than maybe it's like service and, and maintenance and things like that. I, I have no idea. Um, I, I should probably chase that one up and figure out exactly what it is. Um, but that's, uh, that's my assumption. For, for the time being, just because um, it's, uh, they, Fisker always says, you know, this uh, Fisker Lounge and Center Plus in Paris is gonna coincide with sales, service, and deliveries. So uh, that'll be interesting. We'll, we'll end up seeing what a Center Plus is. I think there's one uh, also that's gonna be uh, in Europe announced either, I think it was Stockholm actually, uh, or Oslo. It's one of the, one of the two of those. Um, but we have the article on our site if you wanna 
learn more about that for the people who are watching us from Europe. And I think last week we had someone from Germany watching us um, and that was like four in the morning. So if people are watching us from Europe, thank you for, for joining. That, that's quite a, quite amazing. Um, so yeah, cool. So yeah, Fisker Ocean Paris Motor Show. We'll have some photos and videos for you probably on the 17th of uh, this month. So TVD. And that brings us to um, something else that's kind of cool. So we have um, the Fisker Ocean Extreme Heat Testing that, that took place. Um, this, this I think it was over the weekend. Fisker shared the video on Friday and they sent an email out on Saturday to give people a chance to see the actual, uh, you know, behind the scenes footage of the Fisker Ocean Ready? going through okay. the heat okay. testing. Yeah. And okay. there you Good. go. There's, so today there's we had a um, right there. interesting day. Um, mm -hmm. And got there was a good actually some cool stuff. So I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but facilities. the Dante's Peak, I believe it's called Dante's Peak, um, is the part of this video right here. And, one thing that's interesting about that is it's exactly 291 miles away from this Manhattan temperature office. So far in our uh, hot environment testing, we have uh, the vehicle system and the battery system holding up extremely well. Uh, we've been able to do some long distance driving on the vehicle in extreme conditions. Heat testing is really when we look at the vehicle as a complete system, and we really stress the system to its limits and look at the performance of the whole vehicle together. We need to make sure that the vehicle will work in these extremely harsh conditions, and that any condition that the customers may come to with the car will perform as designed an uh, EV charger uh, of an image or some footage of it. So um, I thought that was interesting. And it actually might be where they're at right there. Uh, I think those might be the chargers. So uh, did you guys have a chance to watch this? Yeah, it was a very well done video. I thought it, it had some awesome drone shots too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. They, so they it's already getting go, warm, you know, pretty warm, the, right? So let's take advantage with, uh, of the heat. So their, their today's footage, route, totally today's agenda, we'll done. leave here um, this is uh, those, with nice. all of the vehicles, and we'll go from here. Um, to the first stopping point is Badwater. So at the lowest point, covers on. and we'll I only stop at Badwater for maybe 10, 15 minutes. So we'll keep the car moving basically the entire day today. So then we'll go Badwater out through the same route we took yesterday, and then we'll make a turn and try to go up. One grade climb called Dante's View. Um, we'll go all the way up the grade to the top, to see the vehicle performance um, as we climb yeah, up the grade, uh, miles, extract performance, uh, cooling performance, everything as we go up. And then we'll come back down, well. Dante's View, all the way down the grade, uh, and then return drive here at the end of the day today. So we'll keep moving, should be a good test of the whole vehicle's system capability and also driving range. So yeah, so I'm going to just keep in mind, we have. We're here in Badwater right now with our Fisker Ocean uh, test vehicle. Ambient temperature of around 118 degrees, which is perfect for testing. That I, that I so we drove cool, about an hour um, to get here, the, and the, the car performed beautifully. HVAC and cooling system battery performing as intended. We're taking all the data, so hot, and we'll continue to drive in these conditions, the maybe even get a little warmer of, throughout the day. So we're going to go the, from the here at the lowest point, and now we're going to climb all the way up the mountain to a place called Dante's View, and climb that grade, and then again, see how the vehicle, all of the systems work together. Hey Sean, uh, some people yeah. are saying that they can't, in the comments they say that uh, they can't hear you. Oh, can't hear me. 59. And, and I think there's some other volume on. Do you have background music on? Yeah, very faintly. Should go down 50. See, I don't hear anything, but they're saying they can't hear anything. Low 50, 48, wow. 49. We have here maximum the video, temperature of... They can hear the video. I think that the video is overriding our, our conversation. Ah, uh, got it. Like well, the video is the video's off. Um, good, good chat. Oh, the, the video is actually muted. So that was, um, that was interesting. Bad video. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, that was the, that was the extreme heat testing. Uh, 122 degrees in Death Valley. Um, they drove 291 miles, probably from their office would be my guess, to, to the Dante's Peak. And uh, they probably had to charge there. Um, 
they ended up, uh, it, it gives them a real world environment to, to check out the battery, you know, different, um, you know, how's the car gonna, gonna behave uh, in, in that type of heat. Hopefully they're able then to dial in, fine tune the vehicle so that if you, me, anyone watching us tonight, if they were to drive through, you know, hot weather and, and you know, we'll probably take our, our Fisker Ocean from San Diego to Las Vegas and we'll have to go right through Death Valley right there. And, you know, we don't want our car breaking down on us. Um, so it's, it's great that they're, they're doing this type of testing. And it was really opportune the week that they actually filmed this particular footage or did the test and, and filmed it. That we are having a heat wave here in Southern California. So um, here in San Diego, it was in the 90s and Palm Springs, 115. And then as you know, we, we were told, 122 degrees, uh, you know, in heat. Uh, over in in Death Valley, and and I confirmed that when Fisker said, "Hey, we're you know we're out here doing this," I, I checked, and yeah, it was that hot there. It's that's quite it's quite crazy. Um, and the car performed. The car did it, and uh, they'll make it better based on the data that they collected. As you saw, all the computers and all the wires getting hooked into their into their uh, into their computer, so they could collect the data. So, very data driven company, which is which is kind of cool. Um, that's what I would expect from engineers. So yeah, that's um, that was the heat testing. Did you guys have any? Was it you know any any thoughts on that? Um, I just wanted to uh, notice in the comments they asked how many cars were actually at the test uh, for Death Valley. Was it two or three? I saw two. Um, I, I don't want to play the video again because it jacked up the audio, <laughs> but um, there was definitely two. Uh, two vehicles. Um, I'm not sure if they drove, uh, you know, a third car for the camera crew and whoever else might have been there. Um, I definitely remember in my mind seeing two uh, in that parking lot. There could have been a third one, uh, but they were both obviously wrapped in that camouflage uh, wrapping. Um, and I did see a photo on, might have been Instagram, possibly Twitter, where they were filming and there was a couple people who i saw actually in the comments they're like that's me they were actually like somebody on a on a road trip and they actually saw the vehicle and they actually took uh, a, a shot of it with their their cell phone and they actually happened to be um in one of the photos that that fisker shared so that was actually kind of neat cool so um it looks like we can we can uh hopefully people can hear us now um <laughs> Uh, it's a Just so again. everybody knows, um, we couldn't hear anything from the video. Um, from we could hear each other talking, but we couldn't hear any videos, so anything from the video. So we assumed that it was muted. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that one. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that that was pretty much. Uh, all we had today for for uh, coverage of, of the you know all all things Fisker that was that was pretty much it. Um, so like we do every every time, um, we actually chat. Uh, we, we go through the chat. We look at uh, questions you have. So if you have questions, there's been a lot of stuff that's been thrown around. And in fact, on on the Fisker Audi forum, there's actually a really cool post at the top. It's called a big list of questions. And there's a lot of people posting new questions in there. And uh, one of the people who are actually uh, managing that, um, he goes in there and he, he, you know, if he finds the answer to something, he'll post it there and, and link to the source of it. So keep posting your questions to those, you know, big list of questions, whatever form you're on. And uh, it continually is uh, updated. And it's a great source for people who are, you know, new to the Fisker Ocean. They want to learn about stuff. But just so everybody knows, there's a lot of information that we don't know yet about the Fisker Ocean. And we did see a post today. It was a reply to somebody in the Fisker ID forums who reached out to Fisker customer service, Fisker support. And they said that they're going to release all those details much a little bit closer to the start of production. So I would imagine all the answers that we have to these questions that are unanswered are probably going to be shared sometime in November would be my guess. Um, but that's once again, just a guess. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, um, you know, that, that, uh, you know, it's most of the time when we can't answer your questions here, it's because we don't have the, the information. We don't have the, you know, the knowledge, the info or the data hasn't been released yet by the company. Uh, and none of us work for Fisker, so we don't have, um, that actual information. Um, so let's go ahead and, and, and see if there are any questions. I'm going to, I'm going to start up from the top. Here. Kind of, uh, 
kind of excited yeah. to get that information because it'll give Matt and I some something to make videos on. <laughs> yeah, and it'll give me loads of stuff to write articles on. I much prefer writing articles than doing videos, but I'll tell you, doing videos is so much easier than writing articles, um, <laughs> which I don't know why. But Well, it depends um, on how you do your videos. <laughs> Some of that's us spend right. hours editing. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Um, with me, I don't ever do any editing on the videos, and people probably know that. Um, and if they don't, I don't edit them. Um, but I usually just do a one take, and you know, if, it, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, I'll start over. Um, sometimes it takes me two or three takes, but uh, yeah, I just uh, I'd rather spend time writing the articles or spending time doing something else than than editing videos. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, that's that. So hopefully it gives us more information. And, and also too, so, so this month I, I'd say the, the, the main thing that we're getting, uh, we're, you know, Fisker's going to end up being at the Paris Auto Show. Uh, they're going to be at the Oslo, uh, Oslo Motor Show. Uh, and then also we're going to get the configurator sometime this month. Um, so those are kind of the, the, I think it's the Oslo Motor Show. I better confirm that real quick. Um, but yeah, those are the things that I believe we're, we're going to end up uh, getting for the month of October, which is which is kind of exciting, uh, gives us something to look forward to. That on top of Fisker, whether or not they they can achieve uh, the twenty three Fisker Oceans next week, that'll be pretty exciting to see. Um, so yeah, Oslo Motor Show. Uh, let's see here. I got the press release up. That's October twenty eighth through thirtieth, and that's also where Fisker. It looks like. Let's see here. Center. Um, yeah, so Oslo Motor Show. Yep, definitely October 28th through 30th. That is the other event that we should um, potentially we could potentially uh, see a production intent vehicle. Not guaranteed, um, you know, but possible. Uh, Austria is not too far from um, Oslo either, or Graz. So, so that'll be interesting to see if they if they bring one of the newer vehicles over there. Um, not that they will, but they could. That'll be interesting. Um, so I don't know if you guys have gone through the comments to see if there's any questions. There, there certainly could have been. Um, I just saw Bill and Roy. Hey, hey guys, thanks for, for joining us. I didn't see you earlier in the comments. Uh, we do have a question here, I believe. Oh. I got one. Oh, um, somebody asked if it was. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Matt. Sorry. Uh, I was just saying somebody was asking if there was any pair news, and I'm not aware of anything since the last, like, um, uh, Henrik had maybe one of his conference calls, uh, you know, at one of those conferences, you know, where he was talking about the pair, but the, we haven't heard the anything. The craziest new, right? vehicle we'll ever see in the world. That was the last, yeah, that was the last bit. Yeah, that, that was we, the last we thing. Heard. Yeah, the last photo that we've seen was him posting something on Instagram. Uh, the day, maybe the day after, or even the afternoon after we did our interview, I think it was actually the, I think he may have waited a day, possibly not. But um, we interviewed him. He, we showed an exclusive photo of, of a pair. And then I want to say the next day, it could have been that afternoon, he posted a similar image to uh, Instagram. And then he attended the Cohen conference last month and that was, I, I want to say it was the first or second week of, of uh, September uh, before the Morgan Stanley uh, Laguna conference. And during the Cohen conference with Jeffrey Osborne, he did um, end up talking about what he thought is it's going to be, you know, the craziest car in, in, in the world. Um, uh, so, so that'll be, that'll be interesting. Uh, he did end up mentioning to, you know, the audiences at both of those investor conferences around uh, the delivery aspect of the, of the pair and how it's going to be real good for, for delivery. Um, he didn't mention exactly what type of, of delivery, like uh, you know, food delivery was one of them, actually food delivery, um, but not a specific type of food. Uh, but I have a feeling it has to do with like, if there's going to be a way to keep food warm or, or something like that. And, and uh, Fisker, as people know, they ended up putting that taco tray in the Fisker Ocean. Uh, and, and in the Fisker Ocean, uh, one, an extreme, I believe the taco tray is going to be on the driver and passenger side. How that's going to work, who, who knows for the driver's side. So that'll be interesting to see. But 
Um, you know, there's, it sounds like there's these vehicles, they're building them for people that like to eat on the go or people that like takeaway. Um, and we take a lot of food, you know, when we get food out and about, we don't necessarily always eat it at the restaurant, you know, inside, outside. Um, sometimes we, we get it a lot of times to go and eat it at home. And with the Tesla Model 3, we almost always put, if it's stinky food, we almost always put it in the, uh, the front, the front. Uh, the, the front trunk. Yeah, the front. I was going to say the front, um, the front trunk. Yeah, uh, we, we throw it in there just so it doesn't stink up the cabin. Um, there's nothing worse than like the lingering smell of food in in the vehicle, like the day after, the you know two days after. Uh, so that's always uh, always fun. So maybe Fisker has a, a great way of uh, in the pair uh, to keep you know food not only hot or cold, but to also keep it from you know uh, you know last and the the stench out and the rest of the rest of the car um that'll be kind of fun so we got one question here um it had to do with wheels and there's actually two right back to back um so someone had sean sean had a question here spells this name same as me sean Wirick. he says how are these lock dates calculated i reserved in february paid $5,000 in July, yet my date is later than others. So I ended up seeing uh, an email from Fisker customer support today that location is definitely a big one. Um, location, I would say, you know, the, the date that you actually locked in, uh, you, you know, the date that you pre-order your Fisker Ocean One, plus where you're at, uh, where you're located, those are probably two very important ingredients to figure out when you're uh, build will expire your lock date. Um, we don't yet know anything about deliveries. Fisker said that on their website and their FAQ and through customer support, um, they actually say that they're starting to work on when vehicles will be delivered and they're going to make some sort of announcement on October 31st. So that's another thing we get to look forward to the last day of the month, um, Halloween. Halloween, that'll be a fun one. Uh, we're going to end up getting some information on actual deliveries. So we don't know if Fisker is going to share um, delivery dates with every single Fisker Ocean One customer, or if it's going to be, uh, you know, kind of, hey, you, you, you know, you'll find out when your your lock date um, has expired, or who knows when. Um, but we'll hopefully get some information on deliveries on on that date, October thirty first, and maybe you know we'll get it all at once, or maybe they'll drip it out. Who knows? You're, you're, everyone's guess is as good as mine. So I believe it's just a personal um, intuition, gut thing. You know, the date that you pre-ordered plus, you know, your location. You could throw a third thing in there, a third ingredient, and that could be your potential selection of, uh, you know, paint, wheels, interior. Um, that could potentially play an impact. Um, maybe they're going to go, you know, maybe Malibu blue interior, um, you know, Trump's Black Abyss, uh, you know, polyurethane interior. Who knows? You guys have any oh, thoughts maybe on that? More, maybe more information on uh, hitches and uh, roof racks. I'd like to see that if they had that in the uh, configurator too. That'll be good. Yeah, we, we, we did read on their website that they're going to have uh, roof racks at some point. We don't know when. Um, and we do know that we talked about it last week, the tow hitch. And they're definitely going to support um, towing. Uh, what did we say? It was like four. I think I read the blurb, right? It was like 4,000 pounds or something thereabouts. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we talked about that last week. Um, our, our next question is, uh, what's the quality difference, black versus blue materials? Mm. And I don't know if that has to do with interior, because those are the only two things Probably. that are black versus blue. Yeah. Um, so materials, you have three different types of materials that the, the seats are going to be made out of. You have... Eco fabric, eco suede, and eco uh, leather. Those are your three materials. The eco uh, fabric is some sort of a recycled fabric. Uh, you know, there, there's more to it than that, but that's like super, super simple. Uh, and then you have eco suede. It's, you know, also a recyclable, you know, suede-like material. Um, velvety, suede-like. I don't know if you have a velvet jacket or so a suede jacket, um, but it would feel brushed um, really nice and soft. And then your, your, you know, your eco leather, um, is a, uh, a polyurethane. It's, it's, kind of, I don't know. I, I hate to say plasticky. Um, it's like your vegan option. It's, you know, they're all kind of vegan options anyways. 
Um, but it's, you know, I don't know the best way to describe it. I would say it's plasticky. Uh, it's, it's easy to clean, um, different feel. Uh, you know, it's like pleather. I don't know if that's a, a good way to describe it as well. Um, maybe you, you two can <laughs> describe the three better than me, but they're all eco, meaning they're all going to be, um, recycled, you know, they're all going to have recycled materials in them. Um, which is what the, you know, the whole, uh, idea of the car is it's the world's most sustainable vehicle. So all the seating options, interior options, the carpets, um, all that stuff are going to use recycled materials, including the seats. So, um, I don't know if that answers your question. The difference between the blue though, and the, and the, the black, the black is my understanding. It's going to be all polyurethane. Uh, whereas the, uh, the Matla blue, it's going to have, you know, the majority of it, uh, is going to be your eco suede with a couple of accents that are eco leather, all in blue. And we have, you know, loads of photos of the, the Malibu blue, uh, all over the internet. Uh, but we don't have any yet of the, uh, black abyss in the polyurethane, at least in my understanding. I I've, I've seen, we haven't seen tiny, anything. Yeah. Just in the press kit, there's oh, like the oh, little oh, grayscale one. Yeah. Oh, one of the test vehicles, I think, may have been uh, the uh, black, but we we just don't have any like definitive proof it was. Is that that the the, the vehicle in New York? Yeah. The, blue, the blue one was it? Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was one. It had that like they the two tone seats, right? right? It had like two. Yeah, it had seats. like yeah, the front and the back were different. Yeah. Yeah. But like the, the front looked really nice. Like I would have taken those front ones all day. They looked really nice. But yeah, the back one with like the two tone, yeah, yeah it's a little too too adventurous for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of kind of crazy. Um, so let's see here, <clears throat> going through the the comments here. Um, everybody, I think everybody's planning a meetup in front of a uh, Tesla. <laughs> dealership a tesla dealership That's what they want to do a tesla or you mean a, yeah they a want to all meet up and show, show up our, our show off the fiskers to the tesla guys wow i, I think what we should be doing is parking in front of toyota and uh honda which <laughs> don't have any evs right now i think we need to convince well, the people toyota has EVs. one it just doesn't have a wheel on it. i know i know <laughs> So you guys might have an, a have and this is this is the question that you have any new information on the pair one right above it and I don't know Mazda three or Mazda six and you know Mazdas in general um, but Victor said hey am I the only one who thinks Teslas look like Mazda three Mazda six and Mazda CX eight um, nothing to do with Fisker cars but um, maybe you guys are familiar I'm with the Mazda right oh e excellent. And there I see uh, Rosanna mentioning she can't hear us. Okay, we're, that's where we're at right now in the comments, uh, Rosanna. Um, I should have been looking at that earlier. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Jim Richmond. Just stop the video. We did. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, any other questions? No, I think we, oh, there's one down there. Is there a tow hitch on these vehicles? <laughs> hey, I want to go back to the Mazda comment. Can I do that? Okay, go quick? for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if anybody knew this, but uh, the designer uh, uh, for Tesla, his name is uh, Franz von Holzenhausen. He did work at Mazda before Tesla. <clears throat> so he did design Mazdas uh, before he started working at Tesla. So there may be a family resemblance just because maybe his style was similar between the two companies. That's really interesting. So just, just a little, um, you know, info. Yeah, and we owned a Mazda 6. We actually owned a 2014 Mazda 6. They're good looking cars. And we thought the same thing. So I'm bringing the two pictures up here. As soon as I get a hold of them here. Okay. So here's one. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah. There's one, Sean. <laughs> All right, that let's is take the a look. Mazda. That's the uh, Model S. And oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. I didn't know how to do both of them at the same time. If I oh, can. Okay. What are you looking for, a Mazda Six? We've got. I've got them both here. I just don't know if I can share both of them to you at the same time. 
Ah, uh, got it. So here's the model. This is the uh, Mazda 6. The 2014 Mazda 6. This is the first year of that body style. Wow. Um, but I don't know how to pull up both of them at the same time. If I, I don't think I yeah. can. No worries. I think everyone knows what Tesla looks like. <laughs> but that looks nice. It's a nice but looking that's car. The, yeah, that's the 2014. And then here's the Tesla again. Here, 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 there we go. That's interesting. It's the similar okay. designer. The same There's designer. the Tesla again. Yeah, similar. Similar indeed. So we do have a, a couple questions here at the at the bottom. We have uh, a question from Shikar Sony, is there a tow hitch on these vehicles? So last week we actually talked about that. Um, there will be an option to purchase uh, a tow hitch. Um, we don't know what the price of it is yet. Uh, we talked about some details last week around um, towing capacity. Uh, so if you if you go to to that video, maybe we should write an article about that. But uh, if you if you go to um, last week's video of all things Fisker in the in the very last question section, we actually um, shared a whole bunch of information on that that we have, and uh, that might be of, of interest to you. Um, but yeah, that'll be an option for you to purchase a, a tow hitch, I believe, at least according to, to Fisker. Um, so more more to come on that. Uh, and we do have another question, it looks like. Uh, oh, chat is updated. Well, they had um, somebody asked about uh, the European energy issue and whether it was going to affect the production in Austria. I think we had talked about that last week. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, we covered the Morgan Stanley yeah. conference last week. That was uh, kind of our big... Um, yeah subject last week and, and talked a little bit about stock and Henrik ended up attending that Laguna conference with uh, Adam Jonas over at Morgan Stanley's investor conference and he talked briefly about how Magna uh, Magna Steyr uh, in, in Cross Austria they are primarily on um, renewable energy I believe he said it was hydroelectric energy uh, is, is what the, the plant primarily runs on uh, so he said that they shouldn't have uh, much of an issue. And he did say that that business or that factory gets some special, you know, preferential treatment. Those, I don't think those were his exact words, but it was something to that extent. Um, they, they have support by the government to make sure that there's no energy related issues. So if Henrik didn't, didn't foresee any, any challenges there um, with the energy crisis that's going on in Europe right now. Uh, so that is... Uh, that's that one. We also have a question here, and you guys might know the answer to this one. Um, uh, it has to do with the IRS uh, tax, EV tax credit. Um, he said that, uh, let's see here. I read that the IRS guidance on binding contract to be 5% or more. Seems like if we got our reservations converted to orders, that we will most likely get the seven, or most likely not get the 7,500 tax incentive. Thoughts. So it seems like if we got our reservations converted to orders, that we will most likely not get the 7,500 tax incentive um, because it said that you need to have 5% or more, I'm guessing, down. Um, I'm not sure exactly where, where this person is going with this. Um, I'm under the impression being here in California, and I think uh, Matt talked about this last week, that we have to wait. Um, for the guidance to come out from the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, uh, I believe it was Jan, it was a January 2023 is when we expect them to, to you know, provide their opinion on, um, you know, on on the legislation, on on their interpretation, and and how taxpayers, um, you know, should handle the EV tax credit um, when filing their their you know upcoming taxes. So I think that's like kind of the official answer. Um, your best thing to do, every, every state's gonna be a little different. 
and each state has different rules on what's a binding order and what's not a binding order. Um, that much I know for certain. So you, you'd have to go to, you know, I'm in California, you could go to, you know, your uh, state tax uh, and go to a tax professional in your state and, and share the legislation with them and you can get a quick once over. I would probably wait until January of next year when we have more information from the IRS. And, and you know, you probably could even wait for like TurboTax or, or something like that. And they'll probably have, you know, a little, uh, you know, blurb that they do on their site for everything uh, that, that gives yep. you, you know, their opinion, the community's opinion uh, on how to treat your EV uh, that you may have purchased in 2022 or 2023 um, if you had a pre-order in. So there'll be lots of stuff to come on that. It's not the last time, we're, you know, we've heard of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat those details yet. Um, if you are really banking on that, we'll, we'll, we'll find out more and, you know, we'll, we'll share that here on all things Fisker with you. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that looks like. I got, got one, one more, more question here. Yeah. MD. I got one down. Yeah. Go for right, it. You want to go? You, no, you go for it. Okay. Um, there's, there's I saw two somebody, was, two. somebody was asking me a question, I guess earlier when I was talking about the paint protection film, how much it costs. Yeah. And it's extremely variable depending on where you live, parts of the country. But for me in North Carolina, I did um, my Volvo, which I did two years ago. It was the full front, which included paint preparation where they, you know, they wash it. They make sure the paint is in great condition. The PPF and ceramic on the whole car was uh, $2,500 for everything. So some people, if they don't do the ceramic, it's probably, it's going to be less. Um, or if you only do ceramic, it's going to be, you know, uh, PPF is usually more expensive than uh, ceramic, usually twice as much. But it's probably in that 2500 to 3000 ballpark to do the paint protection on the, the full front, not the entire car, but just the, the front half. Yeah, and I'm going to throw up a, I'll throw up a little image here of it just to kind of show people what you're talking about. Say, so um... there, there's a couple different treatments that you can do. And yeah, the middle one. there's... Yeah, so so you're gonna do the the one on the you're gonna do this one right here probably right the one that's called partial coverage. Would be my no, guess. it's actually it's full front. Full oh, you're front. You're doing the full the frontal. Okay, you're doing the yeah. full frontal. Got it. Yeah. So it's basically the front half of the car. Nice. Yeah, that'll be really good. I, that'll be interesting to I see. Don't I don't recommend doing partial because it's only the first foot on the hood. So you'll have a line across the hood where they do the uh, uh, film. So I recommend doing the whole hood because you'll you'll get I, I've gotten rock chips up near the front, sometimes even near the windshield. So um, I, I recommend doing the entire hood. By you're doing do the it. full frontal as well, you, yeah. they would end up wrapping it around the edges of those panels the too. Whereas if they yeah the fenders, like whereas if they were to do the partial coverage, you would actually maybe see a line somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they also offer so they offer the full vehicle coverage and then they offer wear and tear coverage which is it looks like uh door handle areas and then also uh right below the trunk uh area so yeah. if you drop a suitcase yeah. or you you do something like that you're you're not going to scratch yeah. the the bumper that's pretty neat yeah i'm gonna I'm, i'll probably look into this more just for the the heck of it when i you know get to uh get the car take delivery of the car when i find out when it's going to be delivered then i'll I'll look into this and see who does it in, in my area. And the neat thing, I think I looked at this once before when we were on, on the show and they actually have on the Scotchgard website. So this is the Scotchgard website for those that are, that are interested in this. And they actually have a section where you can go search your zip code here in the United States, maybe even in Europe as well, uh, your postal code. And you can find somebody in your local area that'll actually apply this paint protection film. And that's that's kind of neat if you don't know where to go for it. Um, I don't know where to go. I, I, I think actually um, a lot of companies that do this type of application of this paint protection film also do window tinting um, from what I from what I saw when I searched my zip code. Yeah. yeah. So Kevin, Kevin McKinnon, uh, he said in Houston, um, he says front the just the front should run around 12. 50 and the whole vehicle should be run around $4,500 and that's in Houston. And I was going to say here, uh, you know, in Illinois too, um, the company that I work with, 
they told us the paint protective film would run somewhere around four to 4,500 for our ID4 <laughs> if we wanted to do the whole car. So um, I just wanted to point that out. That was about the same numbers I was getting. It's probably, it's probably a relatively normal number unless you get into like big cities, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but it might be a little more expensive there in California than it is here in the Midwest. Or, well, of or course it's going to be more expensive in California. Everything's more expensive over here. <laughs> um, but you, you know, with, with the Fisker Ocean, you're not going to have to put any paint protection film on the roof because you have glass, right? So maybe, maybe it would be less, but probably not. They'll probably still charge you the full amount, even though they're not going to have to do the roof, right? Yeah. Our, our ID4, they were telling us around 4,000 to 4,500, 4, 4, and we have a full glass roof. So. Oh, wow. Gosh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, it's guaranteed. It's like, it's got like a seven year, 10 year warranty or something weird. Like it's like lasts forever. And that's why I'm considering doing it because this is going to be our EV that we're going to keep for a very long time. This is, yeah. you know, the ID4 was to kind of get us into the EVs and kind of get used to them and, and learn about them and stuff. But this is, this is going to be. Now here's same yeah. thing for you and uh, you probably don't have the answer for this one but maybe you, maybe you do uh i'm gonna go with maybe matt does since he had his volvo done now if you're spending let's say four grand on and this would go for any aftermarket parts and things like that like would would you if you're gonna spend forty five hundred dollars to get your paint totally you know protected with that paint protection film would you report that to your insurance company so that your insurance company knows that you dropped 4,500 bucks in the event you get in a car accident and the whole door gets crushed and you now need to redo that section of door or hood or bumper or whatever it may be with paint protection film. Do you, do you tell your insurance company, hey, I got paint protection film or do you just, eh, it gets, if I get you know in an accident, knock on wood, and hopefully nobody does, um, you end up, they just know that you can just see that it had paint protection film so they'll replace that. Oh, no. The, I'm I sure would, they'll know. I would contact them for that, for that, for a full expense like that. I would contact the insurance company. You're most likely not going to have to pay much, if anything, to add it. Um, if if you did want to cover that, but yeah. I, I know some people do that for stereo systems. I mean, some people okay. can put like ten thousand dollars in their car stereo system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's probably a good idea to to have it covered. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to try to, you know, your insurance company will probably insure you for anything you want them to insure you for. Um, but yeah, I, I, if it was me and I was going to drop 4,500 bucks, that's like, I don't know, eight, seven or eight percent of the entire cost of the vehicle, um, which is a lot. If you, you know, nobody wants to get in a, in a major auto accident. And what happens if they, here, here's the thing, I don't know much about paint protection film, but like if you have to redo an entire door, if someone smashed like say you end up going to the grocery store and a shopping cart smashes into your car that's not going to never happened to me hopefully it never does but if it did would the i'm guessing when they redo the body section of the door um if they bang out the dent or they have to bondo it or do whatever they do can they do that body work directly over the paint protection film or do they have to peel that off do the work and then reapply paint protection film over it. I'm guessing the latter, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah they have the ladder. So if you were to reapply the paint protection film to that door again, if your car's three years old and that paint protection film's three years old, will you notice a different color to the door? No, you won't. Okay. No, you you won't. No. No, and I was gonna say about notifying the insurance and whatever, and that's fine. I don't, I don't, know, don't expect it to cost anything else because, in their turn, it's actually saving them also because no little scratches, no nothing, you know, you run up against something or whatever. Most of the time, that protection is there to protect the paint, so you're just not gonna have these little scratches where you might. Some people like to just have the insurance fix every little thing that happens to the wow. car. And yeah. this would actually prevent some of that. So I, gotcha. I doubt that there'd be any increase in cost. They would probably just note it on your car that you have protection on there. And maybe yeah. you'll get a little bit better rate possibly because you are helping protect the car. Yeah. 
Now, for all the people who are just joining us, we're in the, the Q&A portion and we're just chatting right now, which is kind of fun. Um, go ahead and hit the like button. We're going to say, hey, in three seconds, so I'm going to count down to, you know, three, two, one. We've got 38, uh, you know, thumbs up right now, 38 likes on, on the video. So let's maybe we can get some more here. So um, go ahead and hit the like button on the count of three. It's always fun to see this, this go up. One, two three everybody go ahead and hit the like button all right let's see we went from 38 to 41 and maybe we'll get a few more likes for the people who have just joined us um thank you very much and go ahead and subscribe to our channel every every week we've been doing this all things fisker um you can find it on the fiskerati channel the osr garage channel or the tesla tips by mountain ranger uh slash ocean views um so that's um That'd be great if you guys subscribe to our channel. It'd be uh, good to be able to, to connect with you every time we each post a, a new video. And, and the three of us post quite a, quite a few videos, so um, you'll get updated uh, when those things are uh, announced. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, let's see here, what else? Um, oh, tonight for the first time, uh, actually we have another comment. I was gonna say for, for the first time tonight, um, I ended up putting a little blurb on the Fiskarati site. So I normally say, hey, go ahead and you know check out our YouTube channel. Tonight I actually put a little blurb at the bottom of the site when people scroll down that said, hey, watch all things Fisker. And I have like a watch now button. So I thought, hey, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe let people know a different way um, other than just writing an article uh, about it and posting you know links to videos in different places. Um, and yeah, that was kind of kind of neat. Um, so yeah, we have another question up here. Uh, I've already lost it. This, the chat's kind of just cruising here. Um, so they, they actually had a question for you, uh, Matt, directly. Where do you get your paint protection film done in Raleigh? Oh, I, I went to um, uh, Tint World of Cary. Uh, Cary is one of the suburbs in Raleigh. So um, there's there's at least 20 companies that I know in town that do paint protection film and window tint. So it's gotten very popular <laughs> since I bought my first car. Even uh, when I got my Tesla done um, four and a half years ago, there was only a few places and now it's just kind of exploded. Wow. But yeah, Tint World of Cary. Thank you for sharing that one. Um, the next question we have, we actually have one about the reservoir for windshield wiper fluid. Did you see the reservoir for the windshield wiper fluid? Where is it located? And we saw a video or a photo or some, some image of it over in New York City in Brooklyn on Henrik's test vehicle. And it was directly below the windshield wipers. I don't know what that section of the vehicle is called, but uh, just to the, between where the windshield meets the, the you know hood of the vehicle the hood. there's like yeah. yeah the hood there's like a little black plastic piece um it was tucked inside there and it had like a little you know sw i don't know a little lever or whatever you could pop up and probably dump in your your washer fluid there so that would be uh you know a good a good uh place to put it um we've always wondered yeah where did the washer fluid go somebody was was teasing on, on one of the forums and that's you know we ended up getting the answer to that one um someone also had a question about uh where uh are where's fisker with regards to fisker finance and uh getting loans through fisker now we we got a press release on that a couple months ago and that was the last time we heard about that and in that press release too there was also a brief mention of fisker insurance um some sort of insurance product uh, we're not sure when that product is going to roll out, but it sounded like from everything we heard that, uh, you know, we, we know that Fisker here in the United States is partnering with Chase for their auto loans and they're going to offer competitive, um, financing. Uh, who knows what exactly that means competitive, hopefully they're the same rates that you would get at other big national, um, banks. Um, but, uh, I think we, you know, I, I made the recommendation a while back, like I'm going to do, I'm probably going to, you know, I was originally going to sell the, the Tesla model three, uh, to fund the Fisker ocean. I might end up keeping that at least for the short period of time. And I'm going to finance the Fisker ocean just so I can go through the Fisker finance process and, and see what it's like to actually finance a car. And then I'll probably keep the loan for two or three months 
or six months or whatever it is, uh, just to help build up my credit because I haven't really financed anything big recently. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and then uh, get to experience what it's like working with Chase Bank if they're the ones who actually get to keep the auto loan at the end of the day. And uh, I'll be able to uh, share my experience with everybody. So that's what I'm probably going to do. And maybe I will sell the, the Tesla and uh, fund the uh, the actual purchase or pay off the, the auto loan with uh, the, the Tesla. So that's uh, TBD. But yeah, we don't know much more about the auto loans yet. I'm going to go through the process. There is a group of people we talked about earlier in the show, um, people who have lock dates. The first group of people who had already had their build locked or their build expiration uh expired right their their build their lock date expired or it locked and yeah they couldn't edit their their configuration anymore that was september 19th for that first batch of people they aren't going to be able to use the configurator uh to help them make a selection they already had to make their selection they didn't get unlocked um from the sound of it um based on what we saw in the fiscarati forum and on other social media sites so um those people are going to have their their vehicle sent um first to to the magna factory to be built when it's going to be built who knows um but that's uh that's all we have for fisker fisker finance but as soon as we have more i'll, I'll definitely share uh it because i'm going to go through that process just for the sake of going through the process sounds like a fun one i'll pay i'll, I'll pay a little bit of interest for a couple <laughs> months just to just to see what the experience is like that should be fun all right, I got a question here for you guys. Uh, Mauricio, he says, I don't, he says, I don't know if they've asked this. Uh, do you know if they are using braking pads or using the magnetic motor to stop the vehicle? Also, will the motor use the car momentum to charge the batteries? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I think by law, you have to have brake pads. I mean, you still have to have a method of stopping the car. Uh, regen can slow it down, and but you still need to have brake pads uh, for emergency braking. I mean, there's a number of reasons when regen doesn't work. When the battery is at 100%, regen is usually has to be turned off. Cold weather, I know. So my Tesla in winter, sometimes it takes 10 or 15 minutes if it's really cold for regen to to uh, start working. Uh, so yeah, you have to have regular mechanical brakes in addition to the regen. And uh, they mentioned, what was the other thing? They want to know if the, the regen does add power to the car. So it ha helps your efficiency. The only thing that we don't know for sure is whether it's going to have true one pedal driving or if it's going to have what some <clears throat> manufacturers have done like a uh, Volkswagen they still do it in all of theirs I think Audi does it also because that's part of Volkswagen group um, they do the little creep uh, where it goes slows you all the way down to about two to three miles per hour and then you have to actually press the brake pedal to come to a complete stop um, but yeah that we don't know for sure I am I would assume considering they're like uh, you know comparing themselves and we're trying to line ourselves out with like Tesla and that that realm of EVs, I believe that it probably will have true one pedal driving. My question that I want is um, whether we'll have regen levels because that would be a plus because not everyone wants that really strong regen. Some people just like to drive with a little bit or get used to it first before they go into the full. Um, so I think that would be a plus um, if we have that option. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I would say some there's sometimes when you want to coast, uh, like when you're coming up to a, um, a stoplight that's say 500 feet ahead and you just don't want to slow down when you let off the accelerator, just coasting would be great. And having adjustable regen, um, yeah, I see no negative to having that. Uh, you know, having the ability to have uh, coasting or flip a switch and then make heavy regen just you might as well make it uh, adjustable so everybody's happy because i know my wife does not like the high regen on my tesla she likes you know she likes how a regular ice car works she likes it lost my thing here but <laughs> she likes how it um you know just the feel of a car that she's used to for driving for years so yeah 
there's always going to be a number of people who don't want to change. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, my, uh, my wife does the same thing. I've Go become ahead. accustomed to it. I become accustomed to the regen, and when the Tesla Model Three ends up, you know, shutting it down, like you mentioned, I don't know the reasons why it shuts down, but you mentioned like the the battery being full or weather, you know, dependent. Um, but there's times where I'm driving and it's like, oh, your your regen isn't working right now, so it's you know, next time you start the vehicle, it'll it'll come back. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's a bummer because I do enjoy it. It's actually nice to be able just to let your foot off the, you know, the accelerator and the car slows down. And I think you were mentioning, Jim, the the game that you play, like, you know, let, when do I have to take my foot off the accelerator and can I get right up to the line of the stop sign, the stoplight, whatever? I do that as well. Um, I try not to use the, yeah, I never, I try to never use the brake. Um, it's, it's. Uh, yeah. I guess a different way of, of driving, but I, I enjoy it. I do use the brake every now and again if I have to abruptly stop, but uh, I, I use, I, I rely on that regeneration quite a bit. And when it's not active mm -hmm. or it's, you know, shut off by the vehicle, it's a bummer. It's, uh, it feels like the car's heavier and it's just, yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah, the ID4, um, it, reduces the amount of the regen when you're at full or it's cold it reduces it but it doesn't it completely eliminate it right. um so i'm guessing maybe their battery buffer maybe they have more battery buffer in there so then it's allowing yeah. still allowing some um that would be my guess um, but i was gonna say matt when you were talking about some people like you're like your wife likes the feel of the car likes the, the ice feel and that was a benefit with the ID4 too, because we have that D mode or a B mode, and the B mode's regenerative, and D mode is coasting. And my wife drives with the D on a lot until she gets like into town or something. Then she'll turn the B on to get the regenerative stop and go, so that she's recharging the battery as she's stopping going through town. But on the highways, so a lot of times she drives with that, um, just the D on D mode and just coasting. So. Someone had a question here. What is the matte blue color called? It's Big Sur Blue. That'll be the first matte color yeah. finish. There'll be Stealth Green, which comes out next year. Uh, it's a 2023 color. Those will be the two matte finishes offered by Fisker. And then we have another question here. Uh, let's see here. There is another one, I believe. So Rosanna had a question about Scotch Guard, and she said, "Would it actually protect the interior of the vehicle?" Personally, I've, I've used Scotch Guard. I think I mentioned it on one of these shows that I use it on my UGG boots, and the UGG boots are sheepskin. Uh, I believe it's sheepskin or lamb, lamb sheepskin. I think that's yeah, different type of, of uh, the same animal, different different years uh of, of the same animal um but but uh i i use it on my ugg boots i actually have my ugg boots right right over here um and they're they're nice it's uh they got scotch guard on them and this feels actually probably very similar to what you would get with uh your your eco your eco suede even though this is a, a sheepskin um feels really, really nice and i use scotch guard on here and it actually keeps water off them but i never leave and they never leave the house these are my indoor, my indoor boots for when it's cold here in San Diego. Um, I get to wear those bad boys. Uh, it'll be interesting for the two of you, actually for you, you in particular, Matt, you're, you're now doing your show from the garage. When it starts snowing in your area, are you going to actually, I uh, need to turn up the heater or if there is even a heater in your garage. What are you going to yeah, do? I, Have you figured that one out I, yet? <laughs> I, I, I plan to add in uh, a mini split uh, heat pump to uh the garage it's been in yeah. in the works for a while so i think i was gonna do it this fall so does your does your garage right get super me. cold if, in the winter does it, it get cold it really doesn't get that cold here i mean most of the time maybe a couple weeks a year it'll get in the 20s but most of the winter it's in the 40s and 50s so it's it. it's not really that bad not too bad yeah you, you don't need to worry you're, you, you're, you're, you're streaming <laughs> Yeah, you do your streaming yeah. from inside the house, uh, you, Jim. So you're not going to have to worry about freezing, probably, in the garage. No, no but we, we like to get, like, feats of snow here, so. <laughs> so, good question coming up here. It says, do you guys think it's better to trade in your car with Fisker or someone else like CarMax? 
That's a great question. Just it goes it goes to the same question as the Fisker Finance. Is it better to get your loan through Fisker or is it better to get your loan through your credit union um, or another bank, um, Wells Fargo or I don't know some other national bank, uh, Bank of America? Um, my personal That's preference, helpful. you guys, I'd love, I'd love to know what you guys think. My personal preference is um, I'm going to go to whoever's going to give me the most money uh, for my vehicle. Um, if you sell your vehicle before you take delivery of your Fisker Ocean, um, you only have one shot probably to sell your car to Fisker or through Fisker. Fisker is going to be working most likely with a partner. We don't know who the partner is, but Cox Automotive um, has a bunch of businesses that um, Fisker could potentially use. They have a partnership with Cox Automotive and they have a whole bunch of companies that buy vehicles and then um, wholesale them out and, and things like that. So maybe that's what Fisker's gonna use. We don't know yet, but it's probably gonna be branded Fisker and you won't even know that it's maybe a third party doing it. Um, so I'm gonna check out, you know, just for fun, I probably won't sell the Tesla before I, I finance the Fisker Ocean, um, but, uh, I will check out there uh, with Fisker. I'll also go to Car Maps, like you mentioned in the, in, the, in the question, but I'll also go to Carvana. I've actually sold my last vehicle to Carvana, had a really good experience um, with them. And they, they're the company that comes to your house with a, you know, a flatbed pickup truck and you know, they you know, bring all the paperwork, you sign over your title, do all the, the stuff, they give you a check. And I had a really good experience with Carvana. I'll check them out. My wife, on the other hand, she had a bad experience with Carvana. Um, they left her high and dry. They gave her an offer on the website and then she wanted to accept the offer and they wouldn't let her accept the offer. And they waited you know, until the offer expired and then they wanted to help her out. They wanted to actually pay her more than what um, the vehicle was worth. And then they didn't want to honor it. So she ended up going to CarMax and uh, sold her vehicle there in person and had a great experience while she was there. And, and there was actually somebody in the waiting room that had their car in to get purchased. And uh, they gave a quote online saying to this lady and said, hey, we'll pay you, you know, say 15 grand for your vehicle. But then when she actually went in there, they said, oh no, your car's appreciated. We'll pay you $16,500. Or $16, so they actually paid her more than what she originally did. And I thought, wow, that's good business. Um, so CarMax was actually really good. I'll check Carvana, CarMax, and Fisker's um, option. But what are you guys going to do? So we will probably trade <laughs> most likely. Um, one thing that people need to think about, and I saw someone bring this up in the comments, is that when you trade in, if you trade your car in on a new car, then you only pay the difference on the tax you know you only pay that difference between the two what you traded in and what the value of the new car is so you only pay tax on that amount instead of the whole amount of the new car so that's something you may have to weigh out when you look at selling your car um, how much more they're going to give you is that going to offset what you're going to pay in taxes you know what i'm saying kind of like you'll have to figure that out if whether which one is going to be the better deal for you so like i it was i didn't i didn't catch this and i've never caught it before and always make sure that you guys look everybody looks at your the deals that you make when you trade in cars and make sure you're not getting overtaxed because i when we got our id4 we had to trade we took our uh bronco sport in and traded it in well it was in wisconsin and i couldn't get plates there they gave us a temporary place and we had to come back to illinois to pay our sales tax and order our plates and all that stuff when we got back we had figured up it was going to run about three thousand dollars in taxes and when i actually got there and ordered everything it only, we only had to pay eight hundred dollars in taxes because there was only about a ten thousand dollar difference between the two vehicles so we only got taxed on that difference. Interesting. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool, and it. it's 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 really worth it. I mean, but if you know if you're going to sell your car and they're going to give you ten thousand extra dollars, you know, that's completely different. That's offsetting all of that, and it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that's something to think about. 
I want to add to that. Um, it <coughs> also depends on the tax in your state. Uh, my sales tax yeah. for cars is only 3% in North Carolina. Ooh. So it's wow. not as big a deal. Um, but I agree. It, you got to consider the choices of trade-in versus, um, you know, selling through the, what Carvana and CarMax um, and all those companies, there's like about six or eight of these companies now. They're called wholesale. Basically, they're wholesalers. They, they buy your car at a wholesale rate and then they resell it. You, They actually vary quite a bit. I'm surprised because I keep track of my car. Um, uh, every couple months, I, I find out what the value is because I eventually will be trading it in. And I noticed that uh, sometimes... Um, one company may be higher and then a couple months later they may be lower and a lot of it depends on their inventory so if they're if they have a bunch of your car they'll they'll give you less money and another company if they don't have enough they'll give you more so it's it's like a big process of how how they calculate that so i would contact all and you can do all these in like a matter of an hour you can get quotes from like eight companies i do the homework check all those companies and also if you have the time do a private sale i sold um previous to my tesla i had a mini and i got the price from carmax and tesla they were going to offer me thirty five hundred dollars for the car and i sold it privately for seventy five hundred wow just and it all i did was put a, a twenty dollar ad in a bunch of different things i did like uh, craigslist and uh, cars.com and the first person I talked to, I sold it to them and it took wow. about like a week and a half. So sometimes private sales can work well and you'll almost mm -hmm. always get more money on a private sale because you're cutting out the middleman. Yeah. But private sales can be, depending on your car, could be difficult if your car is not um, like highly, uh, sometimes if it's a very expensive car, it's hard to sell um, or if it's not in demand. I mean, there, there's a lot of reasons that you may just want to trade still in. Have just a load on it. You may still have a loan on it. Yeah, there, there's it, it. It really depends on your situation whether you just do the trade in. And for most people, trade in is probably just the easiest way. It's you don't have to worry about anything, and they take care of it. So um, yeah, it's up to you and how you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Our tax yeah, here sure. is like six point. It's either six point nine or it was seven two. I don't remember the last time I checked it, um, but ours is a little higher and. Uh, there's some people in the chat that are talking about it's six and a half in Florida. It's 8.25 in New York. And then it's 6.25 in Texas. So, Matt, you guys are pretty low over there. Yeah, we're you at 7.25 over here in California. They, they get it you in another way, and I'll explain that. Our regular tax, <laughs> Always. <sales> tax <laughs> is seven and a quarter. So any other purchase you make is seven and a quarter. Cars are, are 3% but we have an annual property tax on our vehicles. So we have to pay property tax oh, every year no. on the value of the car. And that could be a couple hundred dollars a year. So I just heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. I had uh, never Virginia heard of that. And I... that. Yeah. Virginia and North yeah. Carolina. I think there's a few other states that do that too. Yeah, somebody and, was and... talking about that on another video and I had never heard of that. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Uh, you know, a tax on it every year. And it's like, what is going on? I think somebody was selling something and when they tried to, they sold it, but the person didn't register it right away. So when it hit January, they ended up getting a bill for a sales tax for a car that they didn't even own anymore. And I was just like, what are they talking about? I've never heard of this. Um, and it's also like, there's other states that you can buy multiple years of registration for your car and like you buy three years of registration for your car for a few hundred dollars or something like that where we get have to pay ours yearly <laughs> every year we get hit that's so, how mine is yeah yeah so i wanted and to feature you got an ev we're getting hit even higher for having an ev I wanted so. to feature one of the comments in the in the chat there. I, I saw that I could do that. And uh, this is from Tommaso over in Los Angeles. He, he calls out a good point. Here in California, um, we don't actually have that offset when it comes to the tax uh, of, of purchasing a, a vehicle. So you have the trade-in offset. We don't oh. get that here in California. When you were mentioning that, Jim, I was like, 
what are you talking about? I was going to ask you to, to re-elaborate. And then I saw the comment from, from Tommaso. And he's like, no, we don't have that. And I was thinking, yeah, I never heard that before. That's news, new news to me. Um, so you obviously have to check, like when it, it comes down to the, you know, the EV tax credit, when it comes into trade-ins or, you know, uh, right. property tax or, you know, for your vehicle, um, every state does things differently. And, and that's, you know, that's what makes each state cool and awesome and unique. Um, but yeah, we don't get to, uh, take advantage of that, that offset, uh, that trade in offset here in, in California. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, I wanted to call that one out just so people that are here on the, the West coast, we actually had quite a few people from, from California. I thought, thank you Tomaso exactly. for sharing that. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. I tell you. I mean, that's the benefit of having us in three depart three different parts of the country. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> you know? we we're all over the the west, the the mid, and the the east. It's quite quite cool. Um, so uh, I think we had one one other question here, unless I I, I lost it. <laughs> it's funny. I've got I've got two different ways to control my screen here. I have a trackpad and I have a magic mouse and I'm going between the two, seeing which one's easier. Um, both have their, their benefits, I'll tell you, but this, this trackpad is really nice. It's just uh, so big. Yeah, it's like, I don't know where to put my fingers on it. Um, <laughs> for, for those that, that care, probably nobody. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see that question anymore. I already answered it, one or the other. But yeah, there's a lot of people uh, still hanging out with us. And geez, Los Angeles, 9.5% for, for cars. How does that work? Um, I'm in San Diego, All or California tax. in general. Oh, no, yeah, city right? tax on city. top of it. Oh, 9.25. Yeah. Um, maybe ours is the same. Maybe we have 10% or something like that, too, when you factor in the, the city tax. I've never really looked into that, but I will look into it on this next go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just figured whatever the tax is, the tax is you have to pay it. No getting around that. So I think that's about it. I'm sure there's I people that can tell you how to do it. <laughs> I'm sure there are. There's always people. We talked about that last time. About Contact the representative. Right? Oh yeah, that. Yeah, we talked about or your last time, not, not paying taxes. Um, that were that I'm not doing. I'm, I'm willing to to pay my taxes here in the. Yeah the state of California. I'm not going to, uh, to the big house. Yeah, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be fun. Um, cool. Well, I think that's uh, that's a happy note to, to leave things on. Um, thank you everybody for, for joining us. This was our, our fourth episode of all things Fisker. We've done a bunch of these, the, you know, we're, we're, we're calling this all things Fisker because that's kind of what it is. We talk all about Fisker and then we just talk about random things like we are here with the questions. Um, but it's, it's, uh, hopefully you had fun joining us. We still have 80 people on, believe it or not. Um, so thank you all for, for hanging in here. If you haven't already subscribed to our channels, please go ahead and do so and go ahead and like the video if you haven't done so already. Um, we, uh, yeah, we just want to thank you. It's, it's fun to be able to spend, you know, the a couple hours with you, uh, a night and, um, do this so thanks for everybody for coming out and uh thank you you jim and, and thank you matt it's a pleasure to to do this with you guys as well yep thank you see you later everybody all right see all right. everybody take care take care <laughs>